Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 CPU cooler. Be Quiet did send me this product, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this cooler or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. On the back side of the box, they walk us through a couple of key highlights and features, like its seven heat pipe design and the two included Silent Wings fans. And on this side of the box, we have additional tech specs. So if you're team AMD, this will work with AM4 and AM5 sockets. So all the latest and greatest from AMD. If you're team Intel, it'll also work with all of Intel's latest and greatest, LGA 1700, 1200, 1150, 1151, and 11. 55. Its maximum power capacity in watts is 270 watt TDP right there at the top of the box. If you're wondering about the two fans, they include a quiet or performance mode and they're rated to last up to 300,000 hours. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of our user guide here, giving us a nice rundown of everything that's included as well as the quantities. This is also in multiple languages. If we expand it out, then we can see our installation instructions for both Intel on the front and AMD on the back side right there. A couple of simple steps to get everything up and running with your build. Then you'll see we have our Intel kit here with everything that's included, all the hardware and brackets that we need. And same can be said for AMD. Next, we have thermal paste and our Be Quiet long Phillips head screwdriver with magnetized tip. And then last but not least, we have the cooler. Let's look at that in more detail. Front and center at the top, we got the Be Quiet logo and branding. We have a removable cover here to pull out that center fan with the Dark Rock Pro 5 logo and branding on both sides. Additional fan spec and information right here for you on the back of the fan. Got our little cable hookup and connections there. You can actually pop off this cover too. It is just magnetized. Again, metal mesh construction, some plastic throughout. Let's look at the center now with that removed. We have two Phillips head screws down here. That's why we need that long screwdriver for installation. And now we'll look at all the different sides and angles here. This thing's pretty big. We can adjust the fan up or down a little bit with the included brackets. Here's your fan cable. There's a look at the second fan. It's gonna be smaller than the internal one. Be Quiet's logo and branding on it, air direction. Clearly marked for us. And then you'll see the very bottom here. We have our seven heat pipe design. Be sure to peel that off before use. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up and installed. How does the Dark Rock Pro 5 stack up against the competition? We'll be comparing it to its older brother, the Dark Rock Elite, as well as the Cooler Master PL360 Flux. That's gonna be an AIO 360 millimeter cooler, just so we can have a couple different reference points. So first up, we're looking at idle temps in degrees Celsius. The Pro 5 coming in at 29.8 compared to 28.5 for the Elite and 30 for the Flux. Looking at our 65 watt average temps, 38.5 compared to 38.1 and 35.3 for the Flux. 95 watt average, 45.2 compared to 44.9 for the Elite and 40.4 for the Flux. 120 watt average, 50.2 compared to 50.1. So really interesting that they caught up to each other within 0.1 degrees Celsius. And then coming in first place between the three, the Flux at 49.7. At 170 watts, you'll see 60.8 for the Pro 5, 59.5 for the Elite, and 57.9 for the Flux. And then lastly, having it run wide open, both the Pro 5 and the Elite peak at the 100 degrees Celsius mark, which is built in for Intel CPUs. Probably should have mentioned the CPU we're using is the 13900K. And you'll notice the Flux came in seven degrees cooler at 93. I thought that the CPU was always supposed to run up until it hit that threshold. So maybe it's possible the Flux really kept it under 100, but I thought it was always supposed to push it up until then. That doesn't really mean much. So let's look at what else we were able to capture. So when we peaked 
at our max temp there. The Pro 5 came in at 326 watts. That's one watt greater than the Elite at 325. And you'll notice the Flux came in at 333. And for max CPU speed, as everything is stressed out, 5.1 gigahertz for the Pro 5, 5.2 for the Elite, and 5.2 for the Flux. So again, I'd argue all are within range of each other. And moving right along to noise, this is measured in decibels at idle. This comes in at 4.1 decibels compared to the Elite at 1.7 and the Flux at 2.9. Now this is normalized to our studio environment here and to just any ear listening in between all three of these coolers, there was really not much of a noticeable difference. Looking at our max decibels here, Pro 5 comes in at 22.8, the Elite at 27.5, and the Flux at 28.9. Again, all run very quiet. You're only hearing the fans spin up to their maximum RPMs as everything is heating up. Interesting that the Pro 5 technically runs quieter wide open compared to the Elite, but at idles, the Elite's quieter than the Pro 5. I'd argue all that though is well within any sort of margin of error. They're very, very similar to each other. Other than that, there's not really much more to say. It's very quiet, it works great. I'm pleased with it. I've personally been using Be Quiet CPU coolers for years. I've really liked how quiet they are and I've never had any sort of overheating issues, failures or anything along those lines. You wouldn't even know it, but the computer I'm using right now to film and record this on is a Be Quiet build. And that's why I use this brand because they're quiet.